Welcome everyone, I am Laszlo Demete from Hungary and I would like to present our general idea about the natural regeneration failure of uh, pedunculate oak, which is a hypothesis based on the co-authors field experience and the review. Before going into the details, I would like to give a short introduction about the species and this forest. Uh, Quercus robur has a wide distribution range in Europe it's a forest forming dominant species, uh, has a relatively high light demand, it considered, and occurs mainly at a lower elevation and has a very high associated biodiversity. And as uh, most of you know, it's an iconic species in Europe and has a high cultural and economic value as well. This oak species uh, can be dominant in various types of uh, forests. For example, it can be the dominant species of uh, hardwood for floodplain forests, and also it's a dominant species of closed lowland steppe oak woodlands, and again, uh, open sod steppe woodlands, and it can be dominant in many more types of forests. I would like uh, just to give a, a short uh, overview to have an in, insight into how an oak dominated forest is look like. Unfortunately near natural stands of its forest are quite rare in Europe because of the previous land use and former forest management. Those forests were converted into pastures and arable fields and uh, due to its high timber value, it was depleted by uh, overexploitations, and the remaining uh, stands are converted into even each stands. If you look at the stand structure of the remaining uh, near natural stands, we can uh, say that uh, certain diameter classes, age classes, are missing. These are the young uh, age classes. Uh, and in this age classes, the other three species, the admixing three species, are dominating, and it's a common phenomenon throughout Europe. Quercus robur fails uh, to naturally regenerate throughout the whole range, which means that even if uh, a high abundance of seedlings appear in three years, uh, all of them will die out. Looking for the reasons uh, for why a natural regeneration of oak is missing, we found hypothesis in the literature. Uh, the one is the closed forest hypothesis, which uh, says that the gap of the degradation phase in a stand is the uh, right place for appearing the natural regeneration. But uh, if we look at an oak forest, we couldn't find any regeneration in gaps. And they argued the main cause is the high gain pressure, which uh, destroyed the natural regeneration. Or others say, say, say is that the light availability or soil moisture and groundwater level, which prevent uh, uh, natural oak regeneration or uh, uh, competitive species or the uh, additive effects of them. But there are uh, uh, places, according to our experience, where there is uh, no high gain pressure, uh, there are high uh, light availability and soil moisture, but there are no uh, natural regeneration like this stands in Serbia. Others explain that not really the gap or the closed forest are the place, the right place for natural oak regeneration, rather a much more open landscape, which was uh, dominating the European landscape in the past. And the uh, oak forest was more open because of the la large grazers. And in a landscape like this, there were possibilities for natural oak regeneration, but in recent much closer uh, oak forest, it is not possible. But uh, I think there are at least two main shortcomings of this hypothesis. The one is that uh, they assume that oak is a highly light demanding species. Both of them assume this. And the second one, especially true for the wood pasture hypothesis, that it assumes that oak has never been able to naturally regenerate under its own canopy gaps. And these are the starting points of these uh, 
hypothesis on oak uh, regeneration but for for me uh, it's impossible to imagine that a species which has such a wide distribution range uh, hasn't been able to naturally regenerate and at least it's impossible to imagine the Carpathian Basin and uh, during our field uh, works other contradictions uh, appeared uh, namely that uh, even in very dry habitats uh, like this uh, slopes of sand dunes uh, oak can produce natural regeneration of course these are uh, light rich environment uh, but uh, these are also extremely dry uh, in a forest step region which contradicts the uh, soil moisture hypothesis and also we have experience that uh, Quercus robur can develop a quite dense under layer in a populous uh, forest in poplar forest in Hungary and in Italy too so actually we started to question started to question if the light is really the driving uh, factors or or not and uh, and contradictions got even stronger when we found evidences of natural regeneration in the historical forestry literatures in Hungarian mainly in Hungarian languages but also in Serbian Romanian and Polish literature and they describe uh, natural regeneration of oak uh, in stands managed by selective logging at the lowland and of course I know these are sporadic and qualitative data but uh, they are good enough to question that Quercus robur was or wasn't able to regenerate naturally in the past and uh, if the light game or the moisture is the main cause and finally we decided to write a review a perspective paper about this based on the uh, review the uh, pathological and uh, forestry and forest ecological literature the recent and the historical literature as well uh, we propose that the key uh, impact that impede natural regeneration of oak is the oak powdery uh, mildew and here is our key actors the oak and the mildew there are uh, many mildew species in Europe and among them not all are native species uh, there are uh, alien species which were introduced at the beginning of the 20th century or a bit earlier and the most important one is Erisifa alfitoides uh, which was uh, introduced in that uh, time and here is the species the sexual and asexual parts of it the mycelia on the leaves uh, of Quercus robur and uh, what we know that uh, it uh, came most probably from a mango species from Asia and uh, the most susceptible uh, oak species is the Quercus uh, robur to the pathogen mildew infection as I mentioned the most widespread is the Erisifa alfitoides with blue color but it often co-occurs with the other two species looking at the knowledge generation of the pathogen powdery mildew we can say that before the first uh, epidemic outbreak there was no mention of uh, the pathogen mildew and uh, after the first outbreak uh, it was uh, soon evident that young leaves and, and shoots are more susceptible and shortly after the introduction uh, they described as a new species as Mycosphera alfitoides and then two decades after the, the uh, appear, first appearance uh, the origin of topical uh, the hypothesis of topical origin was published based on morphological studies uh, after that in the middle of the century uh, a general loss of interest can be observed and it was uh, in the time when the silviculture changed in uh, oak uh, forest from copies and selective logging to rotation forestry 
and uh, Madhu was considered as a component of uh, the forest ecosystems and in the area of oak decline in, in Europe. Uh, new studies were published and the quantification of vertical growth loss due to the infection was uh, published and also uh, it was published how the infection reduced the carbon dioxide assimilation and photosynthetic activity, activity and how it derives nutrients from the host cells. And more recently, uh, it was published uh, that uh, the PPM has a tropical origin based on molecular biological evidences and was concluded that uh, infected seedlings are more light demanding. And in a review, a pathological review, uh, the impacts of PPM was uh, <clears throat> published but uh, not uh, on the natural forest dynamics, unfortunately, only on specimens level. And it is very interesting how the ecologists uh, react on the uh, new uh, agent, the PPM. Uh, very early, Stuart Watt uh, uh, assumed that it should be a cause of uh, natural regeneration failure but he uh, concluded that we can uh, say if the diminished supply of light or the fungus are the main cause. And uh, later Oliver Rackham uh, uh, got to the same conclusion that maybe uh, it is not that trivial that uh, what the mind you can cause uh, to the uh, seedlings. And more recently, uh, it was uh, Bobby Etz who uh, acknowledged the impact of the Madhu, but failed to draw conclusions on forest dynamics. And most of the ecological studies don't really uh, mention it as a possible factor. So uh, just to summarize uh, our results, uh, we can say that uh, pathogen uh, Madhu can infect the young uh, specimens from the litter near the uh, mature trees and uh, the sexual part can overwinter here so it can produce spores in every spring and when the infections ha infection hap happens uh, it can shade out the sunshine from the leaves and they can parasite nutrients from the living cells so decreasing the uh, nutrient availability and also can incre increase the transpiration and water loss in the seedlings. Uh, and uh, we can conclude from these impacts that uh, it can significantly contribute to the loss of vertical growth. And in case of several in infections, it can directly kill the saplings. So what we want to emphasize that before the introduction of, uh, of the Madhu, the pedunculate oak could regenerate naturally in its uh, natural gaps. And after the introduction, uh, it was uh, impeded by the Madhu, which has serious nature conservation consequences. And what we don't want to say that not only a single factor uh, drives the regeneration, so uh, high gain pressure and of course uh, the drought period can itself uh, kill the uh, natural uh, regeneration, but uh, we should uh, put more emphasis on P PPM, the powdery module, which is an additional key driver uh, from the beginning of the 20th century. So finally, for me, uh, more evidence is needed to reject or accept this uh, hypothesis. For example, uh, there are not a single studies uh, uh, on uh, how uh, the high growth and mortality uh, are in forest gaps with and without PPM infections in natural environments, because most of the studies are, were made in forest and nurseries and plantations and also we don't really know uh, what are the impacts, the, the differentiation between the impact of grazing and, and the surrounding vegetation, the 
we then without ppm in natural gaps and also we don't really know how the uh, saplings can survive under a shady environment uh, without ppm and thank you for your attention <laughs>